Hello, Jump. I am so pumped to be here talking to you today because we have a brand new series. Everyone say brand new series. This series is literally going to change your life. It is going to revolutionize your walk with God and it is going to give you tools to do life with Jesus forever. How does that sound? Pretty good, right? Oh, come on. I said, how does that sound? I think it's going to be awesome. Our new series is called, We Are About Faith. Everyone shout faith. Now, a lot of you might use the word faith sometimes. You might even know a person called faith. But do you really know what it means to have faith? Our memory verse comes from a very well-known passage of scripture from Hebrews 11. Why don't you stand to our feet and sing along as we check it out. Up, down, all around. Up, down, and all around. Yeah, you got it. Hmm. Getting warm. Now we're ready. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We are about faith. We are about faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1. We are about faith. We are about faith. Hebrews 11 Verse 1, we are about faith, we are about faith, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11 verse 1. So good. I saw some of your funky moves out there. Let's have another read of our memory verse. If you brought your Bible to Kids Church today, why don't you look it up with me? It's Hebrews 11 verse 1. If you've got it, I want you to say, got it. All right, let's read together. Faith is confidence in what we hope for, assurance about what we do not see. Awesome. Well, I have faith and I'm actually really hoping for a holiday to Fiji. Wouldn't that be nice? The sun, the sand, the nice resort pool. Oh, I feel relaxed just thinking about it. But that doesn't quite make sense, does it? You see, the Bible isn't referring to the stuff you might hope for on your Christmas list, or the grades you are hoping to get at school, or even the new pet you might have been hoping for for ages. The hope the Bible is referring to comes from one place and one place only. Where do you think that is? Your mum? Your kids leader? Nana? No, none of those people provide this kind of hope. The kind of hope we can have full confidence in and that hope only comes from Jesus. Our faith comes from trusting what the word of God says and trusting in who Jesus is. You might be thinking, well, Emily, that's great, but I'm not actually sure what the Word of God says, and I'm not really 100% sure who Jesus is. I've only been going to church for a little bit of time. I'm only eight. Well, let me show you the best place to start. If you have your Bibles with you, why don't you turn with me to another very well-known passage of Scripture. It's in John 3.16. You might know this one already. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
If you want to have faith in Jesus, you need to know, one, he is God's son. Two, he died on the cross and defeated death for you to take away your sin so that you could know God and spend eternity with him in heaven. And three, no matter what, he loves you very, very much. Having faith means no matter what, we have confidence, we trust in those three things. Even when you've had your worst day, Jesus loves you so much, he died for you. Even when you mess up, he has already paid the price for your sin. Even when he might feel far or distant, he loves you very, very much. Faith means having confidence that Jesus is who he says he is and he is with you no matter what. Faith also means having confidence that God's word is true. Everyone say true. This is why our memory verses and reading your word is so important because when you know your word and you have confidence that it is true, you can stand upon it even when you are finding it tough and even when you can't see it. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, By his stripes we are healed. So this means when our friends are sick or people in our family are sick or we are sick, we can stand on this scripture from the word of God. We can have faith and confidence that it is true and assurance that it will come to pass. Psalm 139 tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So when we're not feeling our best or when somebody puts us down, we can stand confidently on his word and have faith. Romans 8.28 tells us that God works all things. Everyone say all things. He works all things together for the good of those who love him. This means when things aren't making sense, when our situation does not look very good at all, when we are feeling overwhelmed, we can trust his word and we can have faith. There are so many examples just like this in the Word of God and you can find them, you can stand on them and believe in them because jump, we are people of faith. We believe that Jesus is who he says he is and that his word is true no matter what. Before we finish today, I actually want to spend some time in prayer. I want to pray with two groups of people. The first group of people is anyone who wants to be about faith. You want to walk out of here believing with your whole heart that Jesus is who he says he is. You want to build your life upon his word. If that's you, why don't you raise your hands to Jesus and close your eyes as I pray. Father God, I just pray for every boy and girl with their hands raised. God, help them to be people of faith. Help them that no matter what situation they find themselves in, know that you are who you say you are, that you are good, that you love them, that you're for them, Lord Jesus. And God, help them to know that your word is true. It doesn't just apply to the kids' leaders. It doesn't just apply to mum and dad, but it applies to them, God. We thank you that your word says, God, that you turn all things to good, God. So if any child here is believing for a miracle or a turnaround, God, I pray that today they have faith to stand upon your word and believe for you to come through for them. God, I thank you that this just isn't a three-week series, God, but they are going to be people of faith for the rest of their lives. And everyone believed it, said a big amen. So good, so good. Now, I don't want us to lose this atmosphere of worship right now. I want you to stay still and steady because there is a second group of people I would really, really like to pray for. This group of people might not have ever decided to have your very own relationship with Jesus. And you know what? That's where this whole faith journey starts. It starts by accepting Jesus into your heart. You may not know that he loves you. You may not know that he died on the cross for you and that he rose again to defeat death for you. You might not have faith in him yet because you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior. But all that, all that can change with one simple prayer. 
with every eye closed and every head bowed. If you want to accept Jesus into your heart today, if you want to start living a life of faith in Him, if you want Him to be your Lord and Savior, if you want Him to be your best friend, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. If you want to accept Jesus into your heart, raise your hand on the count of three. One, He loves you so, so, so much. Two, He died on the cross for you. Three, today is your day to start your relationship with Him. Raise your hand right now. I just want to give it one more minute. If you feel those butterflies in your heart, if you feel like God is calling you to accept Him into your heart, why don't you do that today? So, so good. If you raised your hand, this is honestly the best decision you could ever make. And I would love you, actually, why doesn't everyone in the room repeat this simple prayer after me to start or solidify your relationship with Jesus today? Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and rising again to pay the price of my sin. Today, I ask you to be my Lord and Saviour and my best friend. Help me to walk every day by faith with you. Amen. So good. If you are in campus, I would love you to chat to your kids leaders about the decision you have just made. And if you're at home, make sure to chat to mum or dad so they can help you live a life full of faith with Jesus. Jump, this is just the first week. We are only getting started and I can't wait to learn more about faith with you soon. Have a great week and I'll see you later.